Sidra is just almost always in the mix. Uh, very consistent candidates to be able to take on something like this. And we're going to start. Wow. Okay. We are going straight to throwing hands, Duke. We're going <laughs> to start off the beginning of winner's finals of Winter Championship 2023 here at Small Brawl Haven. Yeah. This is going to be, uh, again, the, one of the smallest maps in competitive esports. The map pool did change a little bit since last year. So people might see some different maps. Uh, but one thing that's really interesting for me looking at Doggo is at the end of last year, I expected Doggo to be really sticking with that fate that Enchantress mm -hmm. was doing so well for him, but this seems to be a little bit of a meta pick. We saw Cannon get a little bit of a buff recently, and Doggo, of course, can't go wrong with the sword in the hand. Yeah, I've definitely been hearing a lot of lingering talk about how uh, Cannon feels right now. I mean, we saw a lot of surprise, just strong Cannon play at BCX. Anyways, but that is always super consistent. Not going to get the KO just yet, but do we find the knockout on the left? No, the recovery won't be enough just yet either, but that is, uh, I feel like Doggo's holding center stage very well. Yeah, D Daga's doing a really good job punishing this Lance. This Lance kind of got hit with a little bit of a nerf uh, in the most recent balance changes. It's got a little bit more recovery time, and Daga's taking full advantage of it, especially those side airs that his Modi's doing. Very punishable. Daga's taking advantage, mm -hmm. but still yet to get this KO. Yeah, we are still incredibly early in this game, so I won't start like kind of looking to the future just yet. But I feel like if the game does continue to so wow, okay, that's gonna just take it out. So we get the we get the first KO finally on Dago. But if the Lance continues to not work, that's where I start to uh, say, maybe the Moon In actually comes out. Yeah, I could definitely see Asmodi switching off of the Lance, but for now, definitely has a lot of opportunity. He doesn't go for the recovery off the downlight. Interesting options coming out. This time she'll do it and she'll get the KO. Yeah, wasting no time whatsoever. You don't, you cannot drop those more than once in a row, uh, especially against the caliber of players like this. And like you said, these set counts are very close. The fact that Doggo is up only by one, but the game set counts is 15 to 14. I missed that part. So every single time they're going to the final game in the set. Definitely a narrow margin between the two of them. And of course, you can already see it in this one as they're basically even here in the second stocks. Doggo. Playing around a little bit, not really able to get some hits on these second uh, on this second stock of Asmodi. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because before Doggo had complete center stage control, and now it's completely shifted to Asmodi. Uh, of course, you got to respect the light range, you got to respect end light as well from Asmodi, but she kind of really isn't moving. She's like, "Look, you must approach me, and I'm gonna keep checking you for it." And she keeps racking on single hit damage, not doing too much, but it's working in her favor perfectly right now. Yeah, she's basically built this wall in front of Doggo. Doggo's been sitting on that corner, and Asmodi is just punishing. Every single time Doggo moves forward, has the movement, and as Modi knows it, this time just hits a recovery, but still damage adding up onto Doggo. Doggo pretty much can't take any straight hits. Well, Asmodi has also creeped into that red turret as well, but that's going to find the KO right there. So Asmodi does strike first. If she keeps up that defense she had before, she could get a decent amount of damage before Doggo is able to find his KO. Yeah, really interesting there. Uh, she ended up hitting that downlight on Doggo as he went for, I believe it was a down sig on the cannon. Uh, didn't go for the recovery. Again, one, th one of those things that I'll be critical of, except for the fact that like Doggo was an awkward spot. Edge guard here. Asmodi not able to finish it. That was so close to a clean finish right there from Asmodi. And that, we talked about the extra credit damage. You need that extra buildup. Well, she has absolutely done that. And Doggo is kind of just looking for that straight hit. He pretty much only needs one, but can you find it in the first place is the problem. And right now it's not looking like it. Yeah, no replay just yet. Again, this is still game number one of our Australian Winter Championship. Good movement from Asmodi to avoid that weapon toss. Doggo needs this stock. Recovery gonna be missed from Asmodi, but she hits the nair and gonna clean up game number one. Wasting absolutely no time. After after that very first stock in the beginning of the game, a uh, majority of it was the Lance was just kind of getting shut down. There wasn't a lot of startup to the Lance. We were, it was a pretty critical that just from the beginning. But the main thing was Doggo just had control of the match pace. There wasn't really a lot of times that Asmodi looked like she was comfortable approaching. Then the bow showed up. And yeah. then all of a sudden that damage differential skyrocketed in her favor and Doggo just looked completely lost trying to get in. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the story told itself in that stat screen. 484 damage put out with the bow versus about 100 something on the Lance. Definitely looked like a bow showing. It's interesting as Modi sticking with the vector in particular, didn't see like the signature kit come out from it to really warrant not switching to something else with a bow. That is but very true. She missed a couple of decent you know attempts on him. But I mean, it does have that like decent side to side coverage, yeah. but it missed both times. Maybe she still feels comfortable. She still feels comfortable in the fact that she could probably slip him up on that. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't occur, I mean, it, it, it's also that same factor of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. She's been winning all the way up to this point with the Vector. Even if it hasn't been perfect, it's still getting the Ws. 
I love this change up from her lance. She started off game one with the lance. It was very like side air approach heavy. Mm -hmm. This time a lot more grounded, kind of the classical like Kosselik style lance from North America where it stays very grounded and just kind of throws out like side, side lights, down lights. Ensig used there from Esmodi, but Doggo able to punish, but still not getting that momentum. Yeah, and I think that's actually uh, a big thing. Right, Doggo's starting to get some straight hit punishes now, but he hasn't been able to get a lot out of his punishes yet. It's been a one hit, reset neutral, and now have a hard time getting in. But this is looking a bit better. The Sider doesn't get the KO just yet, but I feel like Doggo's starting to understand how to get in a bit more over these last few interactions. Good dodge down, avoids the recovery. Could have KO'd the neutral light, doesn't hit for Doggo. He still needs to add up this damage onto Asmodi, otherwise Asmodi is gonna start getting that extra credit. Goes for Grand Pound, still doesn't hit. I respect the attempt. Yeah. If, if you, yeah, uh, she makes the wrong route there, that's gonna take it away, but recovery, excuse me, they're gonna go ahead and take it off off the top. Very similar to the last game again. Uh, Doggo did at least get more damage on from what looked like a little bit lost on his house, but yeah. I feel like he's starting to wake up more in game two. Definitely was a little bit of a struggle at the uh, start of this one and at the end of the last one, but Doggo again, starting to find these hits onto Asmodi. I'm not seeing those big like sword strings, those down light into combos or anything like that, or even like side light reads. He's just mm -hmm. getting a tap here and there. Exactly, 100%. That's just uh, like, I pretty much only see like a side light punish and then they've been reset and that's it. Meanwhile, Asmodi, every time she gets a hit, it's led to multiple straight hits, even if they're not all true strings. She's constantly getting D light recovery. We'll finally get the job done, but Doggo needs a, very strong stock here and he's gonna commit to the cannon yeah it definitely feels like doggo wants to play this cannon game against asmodi gets the end light gets the side air not able to find the read with that side light though well, he's getting a couple he I, well he's still keeping it his turn uh finally gets hit by the d light so that turn does come to a close and asmodi uh stopping it right where you needed Ooh. to oh, finally get the hit but not enough on the opposite side of the screen yeah, that is one of the unfortunate facts there. Of course, it's great the down sig covers both sides of her, but that was launching basically the farthest distance it could, so it wouldn't KO, but still, big lead here for Asmodi as Doggo hits the anchor. Needs a little more, doesn't hit the ground pound. That would have been the perfect opportunity to go ahead and even the game right back up and shut down Asmodi a bit. But Asmodi looking for, a, a, she's been so consistent off stage, finding the dares, consistently building up damage, but it just feels like, oh wait, no, okay, all right. All right, okay. I'm gonna change my tone. I'm gonna change my tone now. That actually wasn't that bad. Getting recovery right there, he's only in the yellow. That was significantly less than what he's been taking every other stock. Yeah, this is definitely doable for Doggo. Not over yet, and as Modi is on that awkward weapon of the Lance, something that she did not get too much damage with, but here she goes, doesn't hit the side air. Not a true follow-up off the side light. Say, don't worry, Duke. I know you're not familiar <laughs> with my game. I got it. Like, that now, all of a sudden, it's coming into play. She's definitely been getting a lot more nares, I've noticed, this game, too. You mentioned at the very beginning her shift up. I've noticed a lot more nares. Ooh. That, though, was so clean. Weapon toss coverage, forcing him to have to go low back towards the stage, lining up perfectly for the D-Light and sending him straight off the end of the stage. Yeah, going in there, hitting that down air is a great pickup for Esmodi, getting that extension, something that she's been so good about, getting extra off of her hits. And there you see in that side light, dash jump down air, and able to bring up more damage in that one. You saw the Lance mm -hmm. come in, 266. You saw the uh, bone come down a little bit, but still very effective for her. Yeah, she has just been so on point once the bow comes out. But then the land started picking up at the end there too, which was crucial. And the fact that that was the thing we were questioning before and it started making him second guess his approaches more. I feel like he hasn't had a good zone breaking so far. I see the occasional side light. I don't know if we mentioned it a couple times, but you mentioned it before. There hasn't been the big combo strings yet. And we're gonna see a shift off the stage uh, which is definitely necessary uh, to get away from the small brawl haven, go to a wider range here on Demon Island. Hopefully that helps him out a little bit. This is an interesting map. Uh, in general, like the maps that you'll see cannon players want to go to, also kind of maps that Lance players want to go to. So and there's both. not really like good maps that are going to be just for Doggo here. But you're seeing him try to pick up this anchor. He wants that early momentum against Asmodi. I mean, every single time I see Lance on the stage, I think back to the uh, Kosselik's comeback against Boomy. That's the one that just rings in my head every single time. It covers so Ooh. much range, but you don't have much range to get around here. Weapon toss down. Do we get the closeout? Yes, we do. No, and, she's oh, got wait. movement. She touched the down air, and Doggo cleans it up. Good recognition from him extra steps <laughs> good job making sure to cover it too because you do not want to uh with that lance recovery you have plenty of room to make it back in those situations and asmodi looking to try and close it out right away staying unarmed looking to try and sneak one out but doesn't find it right away oh but the down airs from asmodi have been on point doggo still manages to get the wall touch stays low there asmodi 
trying to get some more damage. Another anchor, and Doggo's going to chase after it. He has been on point with those anchors. I mean, at this point, too, it's it's game three. Pull out all the stops. If you, if you want to go for the big reads, go for them. And he got two of them in a row, which is actually keeping him in the lead. And it's still going here on this next stock. Good read on the dodge, though. And oh, my oh. God. Oh, Asmodee, you are crazy. Oh, my God. The show's about oh. Asmodee, you are built different. Are you kidding me? Doggo had... A, had an opportunity to take a nice, comfortable lead, and that just disappeared so fast. She dismantled Doggo. Doggo made one mistake. Went for a gravity cancel, wake up as Modi full punished it, pushed him off stage where that dodge is staying on cooldown, and managed to convert that into a KO. Stealing the lead, but a side sick from Doggo. Keeps this one close. Here, oh, oh, and the emo's coming out too to try and make sure, hey, look, you may have got the play, but I'm not out of it just yet. You need to hype yourself back up too, especially after a moment like that. Game's not over just yet. Still a small life lead, but Doggo can still do it. He was able to strike first two times in a row. Nobody needs this stock. This is game number three. If Asmodi gets this, she is going into the grand finals, I believe. Yeah, she will be sitting on the winner's side of Grand, sending Doggo down to the elimination side, which is pretty much where you don't want to be at the moment. You got looking at uh, the potential of Hipka and Kyler Alice coming towards your way, but uh, we mentioned it before. Is there anybody who can stop the run of Asmodee? And at the moment, it doesn't look like it's anyone, as that is very deep in the red. One more good read, one recovery should take it out, and that should be the game right there as we see Asmodee take it 3-0 and get that winner's side seat in Grand Finals. Clean play is coming out from Asmodee. Bo looking good, Lance looking good, Asmodee closes that one out 3-0 and uh, I, I don't think she liked the way that you set up that set and was like well doggo's one one more game set <laughs> all <laughs> right but he's like not anymore so I feel like there has to be a statistic that is now following me when I bring this up because nobody else this will happen to but whenever I, whenever I've brought up over the past I think two seasonal championships that somebody has a winning record over the other the one who has the winning record has lost. And it happened at BCX2, so maybe I should just stop bringing it up for people. That or people could get uh, better, better choices on where they want to put their channel points. But I, um, yeah, that's uh, now an even set count. I mean, to be honest, too, all jokes aside on it, it was 15.